Hi everyone, my name is Siren and welcome to a new art tutorial video. I share my personal process and steps behind my artwork, so it can be, but it doesn't have to be something for you. However, I do hope that it's going to be useful, of course. Um, so yeah, I hope you'll enjoy it. I made a video a year ago that a lot of people saw and liked, but I feel like my drawing style has changed a lot and my process behind it has changed a lot. And I've also been getting a lot more requests about this specific video, uh, or at least my process behind drawing hair. Uh, so I decided to redo it and show you guys how I currently paint hair. So let's get into it. Um, my drawing style is not highly realistic and it won't show how you paint hair in highly realistic situations such as um, you know a situation where your hair is going to be affected by the weather or the wind or something like that. Um, it is however semi-realistic and it's suited for pretty portraits like a little bit more glamorous. Um, it's also suited for fantasy and pinup style art because it's still affected by gravity and stuff like that and you know normal physics of hair um, but it's definitely something more on the fancy side like somebody who's done up their hair nicely and looks uh, I don't know presentable in a way so um, I started by drawing the hair out already uh, so that I don't have to do that all on screen because this video is in real time I might be a little bit rambly I'm uh, apologizing beforehand for that because you know English is not my first language as I keep <laughs> reminding people of but it's it's decent so it should be um, understandable in a way uh, I created a layer and I drew a fancy piece of hair uh, normally my sketches are a lot more rough but this is more of a neat sketch so you can sketch beforehand you don't have to do this right away um, a few things that I do want to touch on is uh, the way that I drew the hair so this is the start of the hair obviously because hair um, starts at the top of the head and um, on the sides of course but it starts at the top and it ends at the bottom um, because it doesn't grow upward it is affected by gravity though it does grow outwards of the head so it will try to go up but um, so you know like it would do in space for example it would just stand out all the sides and that's the way it would ha handle the, the anti-gravity but yeah, it still goes up a little bit because that's just how hair is growing and you can't expect hair to go down right away. That would be very strange and it would um, it would have to be really heavy in order for that to happen. So of course this will happen uh, with wet hair or uh, greasy hair. Uh, when there's a lot more weight to the hair, it's going to um, be affected by gravity a lot more. So this is fancy hair. This is hair that has just been blow dried and done like that so it bounces up a little bit where um, it starts at the roots and then it weighs down and it has kind of a little bit of bounce to it um, the most voluminous part is in the middle because th where the shoulders are um, the hair is usually bounced up a little bit more um, and it doesn't fight gravity a lot more so there's a lot more volume in the middle area and um, this also comes into play when we're coloring it later, so I'll show you guys how that works. Um, this is kind of like voluminous wavy hair, it's not really straight, but it has a straight texture. Um, coloring curly hair is an entirely different process and I would like to touch on it, but um, I've, I'm just experimenting a lot with that and I am not that experienced with it, so I'm going to leave that out of this video for now uh, in order for this video to be as useful as possible for my specific uh, uh, type of coloring hair, my comfort zone and the things that I have done uh, you know, many times because making tutorials is different, uh, difficult if you have very little experience on something. So yeah, there's a lot of volume here and then it bounces up a little bit at the bottom, it adds a little more, bit more playfulness, uh, it tapers into a smaller tip right here, but once again at the middle points it will have the most volume. So um, this is mostly because hair is usually cut in, um, yeah, when, when you do layers at least, it's going to be cut in a, in a tip-like form, so it will have that bounce and it will have more volume in the middle by the, the way it's cut already and then it will uh, fan out a little bit more because it has a lot more room to play. So yeah, that's how I draw it and that's things that you can keep in mind. You can use this technique to um, 
draw the entire head of hair um, because uh, it will still bounce up at the top obviously but I, instead of showing the underside area where you see the bottom of the hair kind of like the what's what's underneath the rest of the hair that lays down you will not see it and you will just see like the the same top of hair like stick stacked behind each other so you would have this and then you would have the same behind it uh, this part here is only visible if the hair is parted uh, at the front and it doesn't have bangs because if you would have to draw bangs it would also cover this area a lot more I hope that makes sense. Um, well, anyway, I'm going to show you guys the rest of the process behind coloring it because I don't want to drag out this video any further than needed. So what I did is create a second layer and that's what I usually do. Um, it's a base color layer and this will be the main color of the hair, though it will change a lot because of the details. Um, the line art isn't detailed yet, the details will be added with brushes, highlights and lowlights later. So the color of the basic uh, layer is a little bit lighter than the colors of the line art and this is kind of a way that I approach painting in general. The sketch or the line art sketch as I like to call it is um, not a bold line because uh, when you paint you're gonna blend in the colors of uh, the line art a little bit more. You don't have to of course but um, this makes blending in a lot easier and this makes for a little bit more of a realistic effect. If you're try trying to blend in uh, solid black with a color it's going to look a little bit awkward or uh, yeah it can definitely be a stylistic choice but for me it's not the style that I'm going for. So yeah it's a little bit lighter than the line art color. What I do next is merge those layers together and then I create another layer um, and this will be a shadow layer. So what I'm doing is setting this to multiply because I, I like to use um, a little bit of color theory. I've done a video on this a very long time ago but by selecting a bluish kind of hue um, or I have to set it to clipping group so that it doesn't go outside of the original lines that I drew. But um, by using a multiply layer in a one color it will um, add the coolness of shadow because uh, cooler colors are usually um, the colors that you have to choose or that add depth when you are coloring shadows if that makes uh, sense. I'm trying not to <laughs> drag that kind of subject out because it's it's a pretty long concept and it's a very important one to study. Um, color theory in general is very useful when you're painting so I really recommend that. So I'm just painting on some shadows and I'm focusing mainly on the um, the curved in areas but also at the top and the bottom because over here obviously the color is going to be uh, very affected by the shadows and um, where the hair comes together at the bottom, it's going to be affected a lot as well. Um, a lot of this is just feeling though and experience with painting. Uh, just try to see what looks nice, but don't be afraid to experiment a lot in this process. I'm using the water tool, but I'm going to switch to a paintbrush that has a uh, fine flat shape around here and then a little bit of a lower density so it has. Um, a nice shadowy kind of effect but it uh, also adds a little bit more um, strands like effects you know um, to add more detail later or uh, early on and that will uh, add the details in the later end result as well just a little bit more at the bottom because there's this light reflecting I'm using the water tool to blend it out a little bit more because I don't want it to be, to be as harsh. Um, try to focus a little bit more of the shadows around the lines that you drew because um, the lines are usually the areas where the shape of the hair is defined and if you accentuate this with the shadows it's going to look very nice. That's quite decent. 
Okay, the hair looks a lot more dark than it did in the beginning, as you can tell, but don't worry, it's going to be brought back a lot with uh, future layers that we're going to add. So go ahead and merge those layers as well. And now I'm going to um, blend all of this together. I'm going to set it to preserve opacity and I'm selecting a dark purple that is, you know, a nice in between of the, the, the pinks and the blues that I added for the shadows. And I'm going to add detail by brushing this on with um, the water tool and the paint tool. And this is really the moment where I'm blending in the line art a lot. Don't be afraid to pick around different colors as well. You can add a little bit more pink if you like. You can add more dark pink as well. But try to stay away from highlights for now. density because uh, when you're blending in the colors it's going to um, be affected by the surrounding colors more than if you are working on a separate layer so you have to have a little bit more density for it to show up nicely When I'm painting hair though, um, you know, I'm trying to stick to my basic routine as much as I'm um, used to it. I, it's very hard to explain exactly what I do because I always change my techniques and I experiment a lot. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not ever the same as what I'm doing. So don't be afraid to experiment yourself because it, yeah, you can add in a lot of different techniques and you can find out what's going to work. There's really no really strict rules when it comes to coloring a stylized piece of art. Of course, there's things to keep in mind and there's good techniques to follow that will help improve your art and your art style. But holding on to a very strict routine of things will um, especially when you're doing something uh, style as expressive as mine is you know random kind of although it's it's not the most expressive style out there so don't take my word for that um, but it's it's going to take a lot away a lot of the uh, spontaneousness I feel so yeah just try around a lot of different things and you'll find what works for you eventually I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow here because that area is a little bit dull. As you can see, I added shadow here and here because over here the um, the hair is at a bigger amount of volume, so a lot more light is going to be uh, coming through that area. And um, what it does by adding shadow here and here is that it brings this bit forward. Everything that's darker is going to disappear a little bit more. Um, it's going to feel like it's in the background a little bit more. It's going to add a little bit of a 3D effect, if that makes any sense. Uh, things that are usually warmer colored and um, lighter colored are um, coming forward in a painting a lot more. That's one of the first things and the only things that I learned in my basic art class in high school uh, about color theory. But there's, there's a lot of interesting things to learn about that. And, it's very useful. Okay. Uh, normally I would add a lot more details, but I want to cut this a little bit short. So what I do next is uh, create another layer and I choose a color for the highlights. And what I do with highlights is uh, I use a reflective light source usually. So for this example I'm going with a minty blue green because I want something that contrasts nicely with the hair that I'm painting. and. Um, green is a, uh, a color that is on the opposite of the color wheel of pink so I'm using that but I'm not going in a very extreme and I'm staying in the bluish kind of area um, yeah I 
pick the lighter areas, the exact opposite of the shadow areas, and I'm painting with the paintbrush and I'm adding detail and highlights wherever I want them. So I'm focusing these on those areas and I'm using different shapes. I'm adding it a little bit more on the outside usually and then I make them a little thinner on the insides. I don't know, that's purely aesthetic choices but it's also something that I've uh, noticed uh, my personal hair does, you know, when I'm in a weirdly lit area I can see that my hair shines this way if it's washed nicely <laughs> and if it works nice, if I have a good hair day it will do this. And you can use the eraser if you um, if you don't like the amount, you know, for example this is a lot of highlight in a very small area, you can just use the eraser and um, raise a bit, a bit away at the tops and the bottom of it. This is something that I did in my previous tutorial as well, I think. What you can also do and what I often do is add uh, strands of highlights, you know, separate hairs as well, add a lot more detail. You can use a, a low density for this and then just brush them on wherever you want. Uh, I find it nice when they are at the edges of a strand of hair in a a bigger strand of hair. So you know this this would be a little strand of hair and I would do it at the edges of it. I often do it at the edges of the shadow um, areas as well. I'm going to add a little bit more highlight at the top here because it bounces up a little bit more. It's one of the higher areas of the hair and I'm going to erase a little bit so that it looks a little softer and less harsh. A little bit more. Once again, don't be afraid to experiment. You can add multiple layers of this, uh, multiple colors as well, because I'm only doing one color now, but you can add uh, two different kinds of environmental lights and different types of colors too. Um, for example, if there was green light coming from the top, but orange light from the bottom, I could add um, orange light over here as well. Okay, that should be quite nice. A few more extra details. This really adds a lot to it. What I'm doing now is creating an overlay layer and I'm adding a little bit more color because I didn't add enough of it in my first go, I feel like. So I'm just selecting a pretty bright version of the highlight color that I chose before and I'm just playing around with it a little bit more. And I'm setting that layer to a little bit of a lower opacity and clipping group before merging it. That looks quite nice, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, okay, uh, another optional layer is a luminosity layer. Um, I don't like this a lot in um, more I don't know, calm atmospherical paintings, but um, it can definitely do a lot in the high shiny paintings, the, I don't know, the really pin up -y fantasy kind of style. Once again, you can experiment with what kind of color you want, and I'm usually just brushing on a very uh, clear stroke, and I have it set on 100% the layered opacity. And then I erase at the edges a little bit more. As you can see, this adds a little bit more shine. Um, this can add realism, but it doesn't always add a lot of realism because, you know, nobody's hair is that shiny in real life. It just really depends on the kind of painting that you're working with. Uh, for example, if I were to draw a girl in a forest, I wouldn't expect the lighting to make her hair look this shiny. Um, I would expect it to be a little bit more dull, for example, but yeah. Uh, for this painting I'm going to edit so that you guys can see what it works like. It's just an example, so... There is no environment and there is no girl, there's just a piece of hair laying around in a white room. And it's very shiny and very nicely colored. Okay, what I do... At the end of every painting that I do is add uh, overlays to add a little bit more effect, a little bit more color, 
and you can play around with these and see what works. Um, for this one I'm going to choose a... Uh, I think I'm going with a bluish kind of purplish, I don't know. I'm just gonna see what looks nice. But this looks really cool, this adds a lot more pink, a lot more depth. You can see the difference with and without it, it looks very different. I'm going to put that all over it, but I'm going to brush on different kinds of overlay layers. Um, just to have some fun with it too. I'm going to add one that has a, li a little more light at the middle where um, I talked about this before that I would touch on this subject of uh, where the hair is spread out the most it's not going to be as dense so there's going to be shining a lot more light through it and you can um, make this look nice by uh, using an overlay layer and brushing on a lighter color. Because we added bluish shades before, I'm going to use blues for this overlay layer as well. You can see the difference before and after. Looks quite nice. I'm going to add it at the bottom as well because I find it kind of empty. But obviously this is not as painted and detailed and polished as I usually would paint my drawings. I would work on it for far longer. But the video is going to be very long or very sped up if I have to do that right now. Okay, I'm using one last overlay layer to accentuate a little bit more of the um, shadows and the lowlights. And those are way too red because, um, like I said, the cooler colors are going to add more shadow and depth rather than um, the warm colors that add a lot more... Um, uh, I can't. I can come up. To, come up with a word <laughs> that makes it pop more and come forward. And uh, this is my best language. <laughs> nope. A little bit more blue. That's a little bit more depth. So yeah, that was it. Uh, this is how I paint hair usually. I hope you liked it, I hope it was useful to you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and check out my other tutorials and speed painting videos as well. Um, I think that was it. Uh, in my outro screen you can click on two of my videos that I have selected for you to watch next, um, but you can also just go to my channel and see what you like over there. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!